What should you do if your sleep is disrupted because of stress, worry or uncertainty? Well, the short answer is not really much. The longer answer is what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Hi, I'm Martin Reed. If you have insomnia, I offer sleep coaching programs that will give you all the skills and support you need to enjoy better sleep for the rest of your life. You can learn more at insomniacoach.com. Now, sleep is very sensitive to our overall well-being. So at times of stress or worry or uncertainty, it's completely normal, natural and to be expected that sleep will be disrupted. So if you've been living with insomnia for a long period of time, perhaps you've been doing really well and then a stressful or uncertain event occurred and your sleep became disrupted again. In this case, this is completely normal and to be expected. It's not a sign that your insomnia has returned. It would be more unusual for you to sleep well, to sleep soundly during periods of stress or worry or uncertainty. Similarly, if you've never experienced problems with sleep before, but then you experience a stressful experience or you go through a period of worry or uncertainty, again, it's completely normal for sleep to be disrupted. This isn't a sign that you're going to now be dealing with insomnia for the long term or that there's some kind of problem with your sleep. Everything you're experiencing is completely normal. So at times of stress or worry or uncertainty, the first thing to bear in mind is that it's completely normal and expected for sleep to be disrupted. Your body will always give you at the least the very bare minimum amount of sleep you need to get by. This is why there are people out there that have had insomnia for years or even decades, because the body always gives at the very least the bare minimum amount of sleep you need to get by. So the first thing that can be really helpful is to just recognize this. Recognize that your body will always give you the bare minimum amount of sleep you need, no matter how stressful the situation is, no matter how worried or anxious you are, no matter how uncertain things are. Yes, you might experience a night of absolutely no sleep or maybe a few nights in a row of absolutely no sleep, but eventually in the end, some kind of sleep will happen. It can be helpful to think of it this way. If you keep blowing air into a balloon, eventually it will burst. Now imagine your wakefulness is a balloon and every hour of wakefulness is a puff of air going into that balloon. Eventually that balloon will burst and that is when sleep will happen. Now, no doubt you will be wanting to get more sleep. You'll be wanting to spend less time awake during the night. You'll be wanting to get more restorative sleep. But the thing about sleep is we can't really control it. So anytime we put effort into sleep, we actually risk making the situation worse. What normally happens when we go through sleep disruption that's caused by stress or worry or anxiety or uncertainty is as soon as we've kind of processed that initial event, as soon as that's not really relevant anymore or a concern anymore, our sleep goes back to normal without any intervention required. The only time that we tend to see those sleep problems linger um, when the initial trigger is no longer an issue is when we've actually put effort into sleep. And this is completely normal, understandable and to be expected. After all, if you experience sleep disruption, you want to do things that will help improve your sleep. But unfortunately, many of these logical things that we do in a bid to improve our sleep actually make sleep more difficult. So we might do things like start to go to bed earlier, spend more time in bed, sleep in later in the mornings, maybe take naps during the day, try and conserve energy during the day, do endless sleep related research, maybe experimenting with supplements, the timing of exercise, um, sleepy time teas, sleep trackers, gadgets, gizmos, all these things that we do in a bid to improve our sleep, these sleep efforts draw more attention to sleep and actually make sleep more difficult. So the best thing to do when you're experiencing sleep disruption due to a stressful event or some worry or some uncertainty is really 
nothing at all. Don't try to fix the situation. Trust your body's natural ability to sleep. Try to avoid the temptation to intervene by doing excessive amounts of sleep related research or spending too much time in bed or modifying your day in response to those bad nights. Some of the best things you can do is just listen to your body. Only go to bed when you feel sleepy enough for sleep. Try to get out of bed by the same time every day. Try to fill your days with enjoyable, enriching activities. The more you can do to draw attention away from sleep and the less effort you can put into sleep, the better. When you do this, you really give your sleep the best chance of getting back on track all by itself as soon as that initial trigger is no longer an issue. Please be reassured too that there is no evidence that chronic insomnia causes any health problem or weakens the immune system. The body always prioritizes the deepest, most restorative stage of sleep. And this is generally done within the first third of the night. So if you're getting, say, between two and three hours of sleep, you're almost certainly getting all of your deep sleep. And if you don't get it all in one night, that's okay too, because the body will compensate for this by itself, putting you into deeper sleep more quickly on the night that you sleep and spending more time there. So right now, some of the best things you can do are just trust your body's natural ability to sleep, to try and avoid excessive sleep related research, to try and limit the amount of time you spend thinking or worrying about sleep, to only go to bed if you feel sleepy enough for sleep, try getting out of bed by a consistent time every single day, Try to avoid the temptation to conserve energy or be inactive or take daytime naps and try and add as many enjoyable, positive, enriching, rewarding activities to your day as possible. So I hope you found this short video helpful. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I do try and share some new sleep snippet videos every week. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or suggestions for a future video, please leave a comment below, or you can email me directly. My email address is hello at insomniacoach.com. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'd like to leave you with this important reminder. You can sleep.